Dude, what are you doing? You know bodyweight training sucks for building muscle. You think I built this mass through bodyweight training? Huh, believe me, I know you didn't build that mass through bodyweight training. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Welcome to the house of hypertrophy. How effective is calisthenics, that's body weight training, for muscle hypertrophy? Can someone theoretically maximize hypertrophy using nothing more than their body weight? Let's have a look at what the scientific literature suggests. It's widely believed the 6 to 12 rep range is superior for building muscle, and given body weight training is commonly done with higher reps, this may be used as evidence bodyweight training is suboptimal for muscle hypertrophy. Yet the science doesn't support this. A multitude of papers suggest per set, reps between 6 and 35 are comparably effective for building muscle, provided those reps are performed to or close to failure. A strong hypothesis as to why lower and higher reps can be similar for hypertrophy is that they ultimately produce similar mechanical tension, the primary hypertrophy stimuli. Mechanical tension is essentially the force experienced by muscle fibers. They have mechanosensors that can detect the force and convert it into a signaling cascade that produces hypertrophy. To optimize overall mechanical tension, we'd want to recruit as many muscle fibers as possible and have the individual fibers produce decent tension for a sufficient duration. Lower reps with heavier loads will instantly involve higher mechanical tension and it only increases as you near failure. Higher reps initially involve low mechanical tension, but as you continue repping out and nearing failure, more muscle fibers are recruited and many fibers may increase their force contribution. So overall mechanical tension ends up being similar between lower and higher reps. It's also worth noting mechanical tension is mechanical tension. Your body has no sensors to detect whether free weights, machines or body weight is used to generate fiber tension. It's not like just because you're using a body weight exercise your fibers refuse to grow. It's also worth noting other hypothesized stimuli like metabolic stress or micro tears simply do not have compelling evidence they are powerful drivers of hypertrophy. We have two videos deciphering the science on this. Thus, so long as you're training body weight exercises too or close to failure in the 6 to 35 rep range, hypertrophy will effectively be stimulated. We have further data supporting this. A 2017 Japanese paper compared high rep bench press training to high rep push up training, and chest and triceps growth ended up being similar between both. A 2018 USA paper compared progressive push up training with harder variations with lower reps to lower rep bench press training, and both groups saw chest growth. The percentages actually favored push up training, but the difference was not statistically significant, so the difference could just be due to chance. So bodyweight exercises can be effective for hypertrophy, but does this mean in the long term, bodyweight training as a whole is effective for hypertrophy? There are some potential pitfalls of bodyweight training long term. The most straightforward way to progressive overload bodyweight movements is to perform more repetitions, and so long as you stay within the 6 to 35 rep range, this is perfectly fine for hypertrophy. As shown in a previous video, the current data indicates progressing through increasing reps is no less effective for muscle growth than increasing load. Now, it is also technically possible to increase load with bodyweight exercises through using harder variations that have you work against a greater percentage of your body weight. This can be done through manipulating body position or progressing to single limbed variations. The current research indicates a wide range of rep tempos are comparable for inducing muscle growth, so attempting to slow down your repetitions or even add pauses can likely also be effective ways to progressive overload bodyweight movements. Finally, although strictly not bodyweight, using added weight is also an option. Weighted calisthenics can absolutely be great for long-term progression. This 2019 Norway study found that when load equating weighted push-ups and bench presses, Recruitment of the chest, triceps and shoulders were similar between them. So summarizing this section, it is certainly possible to overload bodyweight exercises well in the long term through an array of different methods, so I don't believe this is a pitfall of calisthenics. Solid literature indicates muscles do not grow evenly across their regions in response to training and exercise. 
The implication is training with a few biomechanically different exercises per muscle will likely better optimize its overall regional growth. Thus, some may feel calisthenics may be limited in this area as they feel there's not much exercise variety available. Yet, this is not truly the case with the upper body at least. You likely want to train the biceps at different shoulder angles, but this can be done with bodyweight variations. Training the triceps at different shoulder angles is probably a good idea too, and this again can be done with bodyweight variations. Training the chest at different incline angles can likely be useful, and this can be done with bodyweight. Finally, the back can also be trained with biomechanically different bodyweight movements. So summarizing this section, there are a variety of bodyweight exercises that can collectively optimize regional growth of many muscles, it's not necessarily a pitfall. Calisthenics may have some very real pitfalls around lower body training. There's evidence hamstring activation patterns differ between hip extension and leg curl based exercises. So to optimize overall hamstring development, you'd want both movements. A leg curl bodyweight variation exists with the Nordic curl, and this is an excellent exercise frequently used in the athletic world. But there's no proper bodyweight hip extension exercise that will really recruit the hamstrings. With the other main lower body muscles, the quads, glutes and calves, exercise selection isn't really a problem. You have squatting variations that will hit the quads and glutes, reverse Nordic curls that can hit the quads further, hip thrust variations that can hit the glutes further, and standing and seated calf raises for the calves. The problem, however, is many of these are difficult to overload in the long term. Relative novices can perform way more than 35 reps on calf raise and hip thrust variations. With squatting variations, progressing to pistol squats can take a while, but once you're able to rep out on pistol squats, further long term overloading with body weight alone is difficult. So I think progressive overload with some lower body exercises is a real pitfall. Due to this, I think it's reasonable to speculate a person cannot max their lower body hypertrophy with calisthenics solely. This shouldn't be mistaken in saying no lower body hypertrophy occurs with calisthenics. This is of course false. I should also note that you can still train with more than 35 repetitions. It can still elicit muscle growth, albeit just perhaps not as effectively as staying within that 6 to 35 range. Bodyweight exercises can stimulate hypertrophy just as effectively as free weights or machines, provided you're getting to or near to failure in the 6 to 35 rep range. Overloading bodyweight exercises in the long run needs a little creativity. Increasing rep numbers, using harder variations, or manipulating rep tempo are all viable strategies. There exist an array of different bodyweight exercise variations that can collectively contribute to producing great regional development of your muscles. Finally. I think it's likely bodyweight training can be extremely effective in the long term for upper body hypertrophy, but it most likely won't be extremely effective for lower body hypertrophy. Some regions of the lower body may not be trained with bodyweight variations, and some lower body weight exercises are going to be virtually impossible to successfully overload in the 6 to 35 rep range long term, limiting their effectiveness. If you've made it here, I have a free ebook you might like. The Ultimate Guide to Bench Pressing for Strength and Hypertrophy with more than 100 scientific references. From technique to training variables to comparisons and other fascinating science, we cover it all. Grab it through the link in the description or comments.